So, let us now see what is the switching sequence in space vector PWM. So, in this is a repetition of what we have done, done earlier. In space vector PWM, the same thing happens, the same switching sequence 111, the same switching sequence you can see here okay, with A, B, C reference waveforms, the same switching sequence as sin PWM. The difference is that this period here, um, this period here and this period here, these two periods are equal. Okay. That means, this period here and the sum of this plus this period, these two sum, the sum of these two, they are equal. Okay. So, this is what makes the space vector PWM different than sin PWM, where it is always ensured that the 0 periods at the beginning and at the end are equal in a sub cycle. Of course, uh, with space vector PWM from the switching sequence itself, we can see that the minimum switching sequence is ensured, minimum switching is ensured same like sin PWM and the switching frequency is same as carrier frequency like sin PWM. Here also we can see that uh, the VAO voltage has the same uh, switching frequency like the uh, carrier frequency. For example, VAO here uh, is from 1 it is going to 0 and again going to 1. So, this makes it like 1, it, it is switching 1 time in this carrier period, it goes from 1 goes to 0 and then comes back to 1 means the top switch is switching once and the bottom switch is also switching once. So, the top switch was on here, it goes to off and then turns on again, while the bottom switch is off here, turns on here and then again turns on here, it uh, turns off here. So, the each switch in phase A has the same switching frequency equal to the carrier frequency. So, for the B phase also the same logic happens and for the C phase also the same logic happens. So, switching frequency of devices in the converter is same as the carrier frequency. So, by observing the switching pattern, the minimum switching, the switching frequency, everything, we can say that space vector PWM is an extension of sin PWM and probably it can also be realized using carriers. The only challenge which that we have now is to make the two zero vectors equal, which is not happening with the sin PWM. So, we have to make a strategy such that the starting and the ending vectors have equal duration and that we should do using carriers. If we can do that, then space vector PWM can also be realized using three modulating waveforms and a carrier without the need of any sector identification, without the need of any timing calculation, etcetera. So, it can be very easily realized just by comparing three modulating waveforms and a high frequency carrier. So, let us see how we do it. So, if we see carefully the sin PWM technique, we see that, uh, so these are the three modulating waveforms and 
the carrier there is a high frequency carrier here which we have not shown in this in this particular diagram. Now, suppose the three modulating waveforms are denoted by three cosine waves as you can see here V a is V m cos theta, V b is V m cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 and V c is equal to V m cos theta minus 4 pi by 3. So, let us first see what are the line voltages V a b and V b c right. So, if you uh, subtract V b from V a we get V a b which is root 3 V m sin pi by 3 minus theta and V b c is equal to root 3 V m sin theta. So, this V a b and V b c is on this uh, diagram or on this waveform V a b corresponds to this distance here and V b c corresponds to this distance here. So, this, this distance here is V b c because it is the instantaneous difference between phase b and phase c whereas, this distance here corresponds to V a b okay, it is the instantaneous difference between a and b phase waveforms. So, this expression V a b and V b c here is representing the distance between the waveforms on the uh, on the left hand side of the slides. Now, what are these distances representing here and here? These distances if you if you can imagine the carrier here, if you can imagine there is a high frequency carrier here which I have not shown in this diagram. Suppose, when the carrier is here during this point all three phases all three phases are higher than the carrier during this region all the three phases are higher. So, this must be a place which corresponds to the 1 1 1 period 1 1 1 switching state. So, similarly this area here or this distance here must be because here you see that all the three modulating waveforms is less than the carrier in this region, this region here. So, this must be the distance which represents the 0 0 0 state okay, where all three modulating waveforms are less than the carrier. So, this one is representing the 0 0 0 state and this distance here is representing the 1 1 1 state and clearly the 0 0 0 state and 1 1 1 state at this time instant are unequal which is expected in sin p w. Now, what about V a b and V b c? If we see the t 1 and t 2 expressions which we had earlier derived, we see that T 1 is equal to this here and T 2 is equal to this, this expressions. And if you observe the V a b and T 1 expressions, they are very similar. You see except for the multiplying factor at the beginning. So, they have this sin pi by 3 both of them have this sin pi by 3 expression and there is a root 3 here, but there is the multiplying factors are different. What about T 2 and V b c? You see that V m uh, sorry this sin theta and sin theta matches root 3 and root 3 matches only this multiplying factor which can be termed as a scaling factor okay, because 1 V a b and V b c are voltages whereas, T 1 and T 2 are times. Okay. So, these scaling factors 
are same for both T1 and T2, but if we can use this scaling factor, their expressions are very similar. So, therefore, we can say that this distance here, this distance here that is this one which is denoting V A B is actually representing T 1. Okay. Whereas, this distance here is equal to V B C and is actually representing T 2. Okay. So, that, that is this one is representing this and this is representing this. So, the voltage V A B is actually representing T 1 and V B C is representing T 2. Of course, this is in sector 1. For other sectors, if you do the, the same exercise, I will recommend you to do the same exercise for other sectors. You will see that the T 2 and T 1, these expressions are interchanging. I will give this as a small uh, exercise for you. So, this and this here, this distance T 1 here and this distance T 2 here are proportional to the V A B and V B C voltages. And these two, the distance here and the distance here which we have earlier said is proportional to the zero vectors. Okay. See, you can see here, these are the zero vector. So, therefore, if we can, if we can center this waveform inside the carrier. So, the carrier is here. If we can center the waveform inside the carrier such that the distance here, this distance here and this distance here, these two distances are always equal from this plus 1 and minus 1, then we can make sure that the two 0 vectors are equal. Okay. That is by positioning the waveform, this A, B, C waveforms at the center between 1 and minus 1, if we can position them, then we can make sure that this 0 vector here and the 0 vector here are always equal. Okay. Of course, we when we do this, we cannot change T 1 and T 2 vectors, because if we change T 1 and T 2 vectors, then we are going to destroy the volt second balance equation. We cannot change T 1 and T 2. What we are changing is the T 0 1 and T 0 7. Those two vectors that their timing duration is only what we can manipulate and we are trying to make them equal without touching T 1 and T 2 vectors or their T 1 and T 2 timing durations for V 1 and V 2 vectors in sector 1. So, the whole idea now the whole challenge will be how to center the A B C waveforms inside the carrier such that the two 0 vectors have equal timing duration on the top and on the bottom. So, this is shown in this figure. Here A phase, B phase and C phase are shown here and we are adding a common mode voltage. Okay. Why we are adding a common mode voltage? Because we do not want to change the active vector durations. We do not want to change the T 1 and T 2, but we would like to make sure that the distance here and the distance here, they are same. That means, the maximum, the 
height of the maximum waveform from plus 1 or the distance of the maximum from plus 1 and the distance of the minimum from minus 1, these two distances represented by these two green arrows must be equal. So, we are basically here shifting the whole waveform up or down which is indicate which indicates we are adding a common mode voltage, we are adding the same thing through all the three phases. So, what is missing here there is something missing here which I am adding now is this V B plus V C M, okay, it is missing in this. So, we have added, so original waveform was V A, V B and V C and we have added a same common mode voltage. So, it becomes V A plus V C M, V B plus V C M and V C plus V C M. Okay. So, that the length of these two arrows, the length this distance and this distance here become equal. So, what should be the common mode voltage? So, if you just do the geometry, so 1 minus V A plus V C M that is this distance must be equal to 1 minus V C plus V C M that is this distance. So, V C M is equal to minus of V A plus V C divided by 2 for this example. Okay. In this example, V A was the maximum waveform and V C was the minimum waveform. Okay this happens in sector 1. So, this V C M was minus of V A plus V C divided by 2. For any other sector, the general V C M formula is minus of V max plus V min divided by 2, okay. minus of V max plus V min divided by 2. So, if we add this common mode voltage to the three reference waveforms all the time, we are making sure that at all points of time the distance of the maximum waveform and the minimum waveform from plus 1 and minus 1, the distance are always equal, thereby ensuring that the 0 vector here and the 0 vector here are always equal. Okay. This equal division of the 0 vector will make sure that space vector P w m has been achieved and this is nothing but an extension of the sin P w m by adding this V c m voltage, adding this common mode voltage. So, once you add the common mode voltage, you can see here that the after adding the common mode voltage, the waveform looks like here, looks like this is what is shown, where this 0 vector, this and this here, they are, uh, they are equal. Okay. So, this is not switching, this is 0 vector and this is also 0 vector. I think this is also 0 vector. But when we add the common mode, remember that T1 and T2 is not changing because T1 is line voltage, T1 is proportional to the line voltage V A B and we have added the same common mode to both A and B phases. So, T1 does not change, V A B does not change, T2 does not change, V B C also does not change. So, T1 and T2 are not changed in magnitudes. Then we see the resultant waveform once we have added the common mode voltage. So, suppose we have a modulation index of 1 like sin P w m. So, these three are the three sin waves and they have touched 1 here. We can see that they have touched 1. Now, if we add this common mode voltage given by V max minus, uh, minus of V max plus V min divided by 2, which is this waveform, the black one here. If I add this one, 
then we see that the resultant waveform becomes like this. Okay? And so, in this resultant waveform, this distance and this distance are always equal, that is the 0 PD. Okay? But we also observe that now we have been here, we our sine wave was touching 1. So, we were at the end of the linear modulation. But by adding this common mode voltage, we have actually we have got some extra space here. This is the space extra extra region which I have got now. Okay, by adding the common mode voltage. So it is possible for us to go beyond m equal to 1 modulation index which is shown on this diagram here. So, here we have gone up to 15 percent more that is m equal to 1.15 where we see that the sine wave has crossed one line. Okay? But after adding this common mode voltage which is minus of V max plus V min by 2, we see that the resultant waveform is between plus 1 and minus 1. The resultant waveform is between plus 1 and minus 1, showing that at m equal to 1.15, we are now reaching the end of the linear modulation. So, this is the advantage of adding the common mode voltage that not only it makes sure that the 0 periods are equal, but it also centers the waveform between two carriers. You can see the addition of the common mode voltage has centered this waveform, these waveforms between the two carriers. So, this is the two carriers. So, the waveform has been now centered between the carrier the carrier is spanning between plus 1 and minus 1 at all points of time at all points of time as you can see here or here or here any point you take the the distance from plus 1 and the distance from minus 1 is always equal so which means we are always ensuring that the carrier the three waveforms are middle of the carrier okay so we have done some simulations with this uh, space vector pwm and you can see for example suppose we have vdc equal to 600 volt the fundamental pole voltage with if you use uh, space vector pwm with a modulation index of 0 0.98 so the magnitude of voltage that you can get is 1.15 or 1.154 into 600 into 0 0.5 into 0 0.98 that is 339 volts. In case of sin PWM, we were not getting this one. In sin PWM, this 1.15 was not available. So, in space vector PWM, we get this much voltage extra. If you see the harmonic spectrum, uh, the, the, you have the fundamental here which is again 339 volts and then you have actually all triplet harmonics. Triplet harmonics means 3rd, 9th, 15th, 21st, etcetera. So, you see here this is the 3rd harmonic, this is the 9th harmonic, this is the 15th harmonic and so on. So, all these harmonics will come and this is the uh, harmonic that is introduced by the common mode voltage 3rd, 9th, 15th, 21st, etcetera. They are being introduced by the common mode voltage, but this will appear on the pole voltage, but it will never appear on the line voltage, neither will it appear on the load voltage because line voltage is the differential voltage between two pole voltages VAO and VBO. 
So VAB is nothing but VAO minus VBO. So it is a differential voltage and so the common mode voltage will get out. So you can see the line voltage and you see in the line voltage spectrum there is no third harmonic. So there, the, the, there is no third harmonic, there is no ninth harmonic, there is no fifteenth harmonic like that. So all these have disappeared. So the line voltage magnitude is root 3 times the pole voltage magnitude. So it is 587 or, or like 588 volts. And since the line voltage does not contain any triplane harmonics, so the phase voltages will also not contain any triplane harmonics. So this is not pole voltage, this is phase voltage here. So the phase voltage will not contain or load phase voltage will not contain any harmonics. So we see that in space vector PWM to summarize, we see that space vector PWM uh, is nothing but an extension of sin PWM where the two zero vectors are uh, used equally. It can be realized by carriers. Uh, just like sin PWM, there is no difference, only thing is that we have to adjust the common mode, we have to introduce a common mode voltage, we have to adjust it such that the zero vectors at the start and at the end are equal in duration. And the greatest benefit of space vector PWM over sin PWM is that we get 15 percent more from the same DC bus, which was not possible in sin PWM technique.